essentially what I'm going to do these mounting brackets for this reed head actually go on here like this. I'm going to mount this one to the side of this power box on the back of the headstock. Uh, it just takes two bolts that will go in there to mount that on. But before I do any drilling or anything there, I want to open up this power box, get inside there, make sure I'm not going to hit anything when I drill through there and if there's room for the bolts and nuts in there. And I want to make sure I don't get any, any shavings inside that box. So I'm going to unplug the power to this lathe and uh, take the cover off this box and inspect everything and then I'll, uh, I'll come back here. taken off the electrical box. I've got the power removed from the lathe. I marked where I need to drill the two holes on the side of this box and center punch them. So I'm going to drill those and we'll get on with this. out in here, but there were just a couple of small chips in here. Nothing to worry about. Uh, in fact, I actually picked most of them out and then used the air hose just a little bit there. inside this power box. You want the power disconnected from the lathe. You don't want to get hooked up on the power in here anymore. Could tend to ruin your whole day.
get all of this hooked up. Now I'll uh, take the camera off the tripod and bring it over here and show you how this is all set up here. Nothing real complicated about it. Like I said, you just want to be careful working around inside that power box. Okay, there's a quick shot. I've got the readout mounted on the back of the lathe on that arm there. And that arm can pivot and move around. The readout can pivot and move around. That's about where I think I'm going to use it. I don't know. It may get moved around as time goes on while I'm using things. But let me take the camera off of here and I'll show you how I've got that all mounted over there. And uh, then I'll get the cables hooked up to it and we'll test it and make sure it all works. Okay, the lighting isn't real good back here, but you can see there where I've got the bracket bolted onto the side of that power box that's on the back of the headstock there. It's just got those two bolts that hold it on. Like I said, I had to drill through that into the power box. You can see there's a lot of electrical components in here. That's why we wanted to be real careful. Yeah, I don't know if those bolts are going to show up or not, but there's where it's bolted into that power box. I need to get the cover put back on there. There's the cover down there. Need to get it put back on that power box. And then I'll bring the two cables up and hook them up on the back of this here. The x-axis cable hooks up here. The z-axis cable hooks here. Power cord goes here, plugs into the wall, and there's the power switch. And then we'll try this thing out. So, uh, I'll be right back. Okay, as you can see, I got it all hooked up. There's a close-up shot of the readout. So you can actually see the numbers on there. I'm moving the cross slide. That's the x axis. As you can see that works very well and you get some very fine accuracy there. I'm moving the carriage.
think I'm going to be very, very happy with these readouts. And then you can zero those at any point. Push the x-axis, hit the zero button. That button there and it zeroes that axis. Hit this one. Got that axis zeroed out. And I can start over from right there. I think I've got to uh, go into the programming and flip-flop things here. But anyway, they are hooked up. They are working. So, I've just got to clean up my mess. I've got to uh, reinstall the backsplash or chip guard on the back of the lathe. Then I've got to uh, route all the cables. And there's some cable ties and cable clamps that came in this kit. And I'll get all the, all the cables mounted so that there's plenty of slack on them for full travel for both of them here. And I've still got to do the same thing on the mill drill. But anyway, that completes this video and this series on installing my Birmingham Unique DRO on my Birmingham YCL 1340 metal lathe. I hope you enjoyed this series and this video. I hope it was helpful to you if you come, come to uh, mounting a DRO on your lathe down the road. I hope this will help. Anyway, this is how I did it on my lathe. There's probably other ways to do it, other ways to use the brackets. Uh, I just did what seemed to be the easiest and the simplest way to do it for me. But it is hooked up, it is working, so I have them both ready to go. So once I get the lathe put back together with the chip guard on there and get all the uh, the cables routed right on both of these machines maybe we can get on to uh, actually doing some project videos I hope so we'll see you soon until then thanks for watching and happy machining